This is Barry Long speaking from Tambourine Mountain, about five or six miles inland as the crow flies, from the Gold Coast in Queensland, Australia. We have established our home on this mountain, and it's a very beautiful place. It's about 1,800 feet high, and our home, the patio on which I'm sitting now, looks over a very steep, bushy escarpment towards the west, where the sun sets, directly in front of me, where I'm sitting now. Down below, about 1,500 feet, is the valley. And as far as I can see, which is about 30 or 40 miles, there is a range of mountains. There's something like you see the Himalayas in India. A 180 degrees panorama. The plateau, the mountain, which is a plateau, is about six miles long and one half to say one mile wide. The temperature of a daytime is seldom falls below six. Ah, that's what you hear. You hear that? That's the rainbow lorikeets. And we've got a little feeder where Cathy puts bread and honey out for them, and that's about 20 feet away from me. And at present there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them all around it, perched in the tree and squawking and squabbling and uh, getting on with it. And so you'll hear those from time to time. You're also likely to hear some other birds, butcher birds, magpies, kookaburras, the minor bird, the rather squawky, harsh cry. But that's this place, filled with lush foliage, mountain air, and beautiful birds, and very, very close and reflective of the wonder of the earth. Today, I'm moved to speak to you of the two aspects that I am. The aspect of love and the aspect of truth. Now you know that whenever I say I, it is I, the only I in the universe, speaking. And you know where that I is. That I is marked in the position of time and space by your body, where you use exclusively as far as you are concerned and as far as you can possibly know the word I to signify the mystery that you are. There is only one I in the universe because only I know whether I am lying when I say I love you. You must not allow the world, the magnet of the world, to take you away from that truth. For no teaching and no one on earth can produce evidence to the contrary of that. For you are the living evidence. You are I. So when I say that love and truth are the two aspects that I am, they are the two aspects of yourself. And I'm going to demonstrate those to you in a new way today. When I say new, I mean a practical way, so that you will be able to apply the truth of the energy of them to your daily life and bring about or contribute to that fundamental change that is always taking place in these bodies and the mind as I enter them and purify them. I'll demonstrate this aspect of truth to you by first saying there are three ways of perceiving. The first is to perceive the truth and the truth is always the truth 
behind existence, behind the phenomena. The next way of perceiving is the way of perceiving the fact. That is the way the businessman perceives and runs the practical world. And you perceive things in your daily life. You perceive the fact. The milk is on the table. Here is your teacup. There is no mistaking that. That is a fact. The third way of perceiving is the emotional way, and this is the cause of all the unhappiness on earth. This is what we have got to get rid of in ourselves. And that is the way of perceiving as things are not. And all emotional perception is to perceive as things are not. Now first, this aspect of truth, perceiving the truth. And it comes down to a form of symbolism, which I'm going to demonstrate to you, so that you can use it in your daily life. This symbolic perception of truth, which is the perceiving of truth itself, as man became more and more lost in his man-made world and left the natural world, the beautiful world where there is no unhappiness, which is immediate now. His perception of the truth, the symbol of the truth behind phenomenon, behind existence, became superstition. And that is where it largely is today. Now let me show you, so that you can experience this in your daily life. The furthest range is about seven ranges away from where I am, as I say, 30 or 40 miles away. And the closest range to me, it's really a ridge, is what is called locally Mount misery. So between the far farthest range, which I can see at this moment in my life, in these senses, are five or six other ranges, and then the last one, which I am looking down on, because my, it's about 300 feet lower than where I am, and across the valley, is Mount Misery. They say it looks, resembles a dragon, one of those reptiles, lizards, but I see it as a man or a woman lying on his or her back. The arms are outstretched, the legs stretched out, the head, the stomach. And that man or woman, and I see it as the man, is in absolute surrender, finished, complete, lying on his back, surrendered, utterly finished, handing over to the cosmos that forever, as far as this existence is concerned, looks down on him. Now let me tell you the symbolism of this. The furthest range over there represents where I began, what I have left behind a long, long time ago. And each ridge that I see is the movement of myself in this body and this mind as I entered and left behind the former shell of myself. And so I create my whole horizon, my whole panorama I have created by my past. And I am now, by the grace of God and the truth that I am, can look across here and see my own past before me and my own present through my senses, this beautiful natural thing of the earth that I am. Mount Misery is my own body lying there across the valley, surrendered as Barry Long had to surrender utterly to the God inside himself, so that I, that incoming awareness of God, could come into the world, into existence. So I look down upon my own self. And I look around this beautiful, extraordinary place because I am above my misery. 
I have risen above unhappiness on earth. I am one. I am one with I. There is only one. I, the figure one. I, the unity. I, that stands alone and yet am behind all things, for I perceive the truth. What I have described to you is going to occur to you. But you are not going to be able to think about it and suddenly resurrect a situation where you say, oh, now I must look and see where I am, what my past is, or where I am in this universe, or in the truth. You can't do it that way, for that is superstition. And you will then call up psychic uh, reflections which will be distorted and twisted. And you will start to try to guide your life by them. And that is not the truth. Your life is guided for you by being true. But you, the perception of God, which is I, are allowed to see everything as long as you remain pure and unattached. So from time to time in your life, from now on, you are going, whether you are at work or whatever you are doing, you might be in a beautiful place or you might not be. I, the energy of I, is going to arise in you and you are going to be reminded to be still and see. See where you are, see what is in front of you. And that will be the measure of where you are, what you are facing, where you are in the truth, where you are in the spirit, what you have left behind if you can see it, and what you are now. This is going to happen to you. Don't try to make it happen. Just let it happen. I shall remind you, you don't have to think about it. The birds are a little silent now. They're feeding. The Karawongs, that's a nice Australian name, isn't it? They're a black and white bird, something like a magpie, rather large, are feeding beside them. The rainbow lorikeet that you just heard then is extraordinary colour. He's green down the back, a scintillating green. It's all magnificent, this beautiful earth that I perceive. And that is not just this place, for the beautiful earth is where you are. And you must perceive it. If you are going to be the truth, know the truth. You must perceive the truth. And that is always in the beautiful earth. The God or life created world. The natural world. Not the man made world. The man made world is not beautiful. You only think it is. It is the God created world where the truth is.